Hello and welcome back to the Squirrel Heed YouTube channel and what I'm going to be looking at tonight obviously as the group stage now of the Euro 2016 has now finally wrapped up after a wonderful game with Ireland and Italy wrapping up the uh, group stages brilliantly uh, for me anyway. Um, not, a, not necessarily an Ireland fan but really great to see them do what they did. Um, so what I'm going to go do obviously is I'm going to go back and look at my predictions which are in the top half of this video and go through the actual UEFA standings uh, website and have a look at how the groups finished, how did I do in my predictions. I think by first, like I haven't properly looked through so when I go through this you're going to learn about it just as much as I have in real time right now. Uh, the only one I've looked at properly is Group A because it's right there on the screen. Um, but first of all I do have to comment on Ireland. Ireland, you just never gave up and you fought right to the end, you showed a lot of spirit to just keep going and try and get through because they knew they had to win, they had to win to progress any further as like as the third place, uh, best one of the best places in third place. By doing what they've done and an absolutely unbelievable, unbelievable ball into the box to Robbie Brady, nods it in, just one of the most delicate headers, nods it in past Sirigu. 1-0, they held out, almost looked like they were going to go down the wing and score a second in the dying moments, but unbelievable, unbelievable. Every team in a tournament should be having that sort of spirit. Um, so well done to Ireland. Um, and that looks like, obviously, we've got Northern Ireland, we've got England, we've got Wales, and we've got Republic of Ireland all going through to the round of 16, which is just awesome. Unfortunately, obviously, Scotland aren't with us, but, you know, if our teams keep progressing how they are, maybe one day we'll see them all at a tournament at the same time. Who knows? Let's crack on with going through the groups. So I'm obviously going to start with Group A. Now, I predicted that France were going to win it, which I did get right. I predicted that Switzerland were going to come second, which I got right. But what I didn't get right was I put Albania as going uh, last and Romania as being third, and they were just the other way around. Obviously, unfortunately for those guys, we're saying goodbye to both of them. Um, in this one, they didn't finish as one of the best third places. Um, so obviously France and Switzerland go through on that one. Now let's have a look at Group B. Now Group B, um, when I'm looking at it on here, so I predicted that Wales were going to top the group, England were going to come second, which I did get correct, um, probably much to the chagrin of a few people, but I did get that correct. Um, and I had the other way around of Russia and Slovakia. Slovakia actually go through as one of the best third places, so that's, the sec that's uh, one of those there. Moving on to Group C, I had Germany to top the group, Poland to come second, which I did get correct. It's looking like I'm getting the first two correct, and then after that I'm blowing it because for some reason I didn't anticipate that Ukraine were going to lose every single game. I just didn't see it happening. I just thought that they had a bit more quality than, say, then say a Northern Ireland, but Northern Ireland had a, a really gritty resolve. Really great credit to those guys for going through um, as part of one of the uh, best third places there. And obviously Poland and Germany were going through on equal points, which is obviously, you know, it is really good for them guys, but pff, hell, did not anticipate Ukraine going out. But there we are, that's the nature of tournament football. Moving on to Group D. So Group D, obviously, I actually cannot believe I predicted. Did I, did I predict this correct? I don't remember in the video because it didn't let me choose number three on this one because I didn't realize I'd already chosen one uh, a little bit later. Um, but basically, I got Croatia and Spain correct. Um, and Turkey and Czech Republic, obviously, they haven't gone through as any of the third best places. But Croatia and Spain. I don't know why I had Croatia to go through. I just had a feeling, discussing with people, friends that I know as well, that Croatia, the quality in their team, actually got more quality than you think. And they really showed that against a Spain that was lackluster, that didn't seem to want to fight for a win, or at least want to fight to top the group. And they really blew it um, against Croatia. And Croatia broke on them. And it was a beautiful goal by Perisic. De Gea should have done a bit more, leaving a bit of a gap between uh, himself and the post. But credit to Croatia, they deserve to have topped the group because they've been, I think they've flown under the radar in this whole tournament so far. And Spain looked like they were going to kick on, like, as I've said in the video, if they kick on and they have to beat in, uh, I think it was Turkey, they beat 3-0. <sighs> Great stuff. And then, you know, but they haven't kicked on from there, really. They've, they've had that one really impressive win. 
and that's about it and it's not not the best and obviously when you get Ramos coming up to take a penalty and you're hearing that Iniesta was going to take it oh, I wouldn't be the happiest of a Spain fan but you know the main thing that happens now is obviously they are through they're just obviously now through into a different part of the bracket but we'll come on to that later Turkey and Czech Republic unfortunately finishing third and fourth respectively but they are unfortunately going home now looking on to group E I had Belgium to finish first Italy to finish second I had Ireland, Republic of Ireland, I should say, to finish third and Sweden to finish last. Now, I got um, Ireland and Sweden the right way around. Um, I didn't think that Sweden had the quality to actually go through in this tournament, to go very far out of the groups. And unfortunately for Zlatan and the player that he is, and now, as we know, being his very last match as a Sweden in a Sweden shirt, now that we know he's retired from international football and unfortunately he's had to go out on a loss. So I can't imagine going out on a loss for Zlatan Ibrahimovic is going to feel great with Sweden, but maybe it is the right decision to, to, to make for him, going on to whatever club he's going to, which still isn't confirmed yet, but now with them out of the Euros, that might get confirmed a bit quicker than we anticipated. Uh, Republic of Ireland, as I was saying before, smashing absolutely unbelievable game against Italy. Well-deserved victory. Um, it's very good to see them going through. It's just really nice to see them go through um, and, and the way that they did it as well. They had great resolve, great defence as well. Um, and a, maybe a bit of a slice of luck to get that goal at the end, but they got it and that's the main thing. Belgium going through second. I have still, I'm not convinced by Belgium. They won 1-0 tonight against Sweden. Didn't get to watch the game, uh, couldn't dual screen it, um, but I believe that Nyan Golan, or Nyan Golan, however you say his name, scored the only goal in that game to win 1-0 against Sweden and to make sure that Sweden didn't make it any further in this competition. And Italy, who I actually have as outsiders, you know, one of the outsiders to possibly win the tournament, um, but you never know what's going to happen because obviously they did, they came up against a bit of a not necessarily a brick wall in Ireland tonight, but they just couldn't... They, it seemed like they were getting much more frustrated when they couldn't actually make make good on the chances that they had. Um, but they've shown enough for me to think that they've got one of the most solid defences in this tournament and they've got something going forward as well that they could very well end up at least in semi-finals and that's what they should be aiming for realistically. And especially seeing as they've topped the group, they really don't have an excuse depending on who they come up against. And finally, we have Group F. Now, I don't think anybody in the world in the world got Group F right. Um, I still had, for some reason, I had Portugal to top the group. As you can see, they officially came third and went through as one of the third place teams. Um, I had Austria to finish second, and I'm so, so surprised they didn't even win a game at this tournament. I thought they had way more quality in their team than, say, an Iceland did, but you know absolute credit to Iceland as well because they had unbelievable resolve um, and again like a lot of these teams they don't always have the quality or the star quality like when you've got like a Ronaldo who again take my hat off if I had one to Ronaldo tonight because he pulled that team back over the line and that is what star players do I've given him a bit of shit in a few videos about him not being able to score, calling him Penaldo and stuff like that, and you know, and sometimes that is what he's known about. But what he's also good at is the class that he showed tonight. If he pulls that out in every other game in this tournament, they're dangerous. They are dangerous. It's when he can't do that that's when Portugal will fall. But Ronaldo scoring two goals, setting one up for Nani, credit to them, absolutely credit to them for getting that third place spot and ensuring that they can now go through and progress into the round of 16. Iceland providing a bit of a shock and Hungary I think as well um, with the pyjama pant goalkeeper who had a, I mean that was of, right now, Portugal versus Hungary is the game of the tournament. Finishing 3-3, unbelievable game to watch end to end. You couldn't, you couldn't have asked for more of tour tournament football. The only thing that would have been great is obviously if you'd have had a winner. But I don't think the way the game that went, the way that game went, it deserved a winner. If you know what I mean, I think it just actually deserved to play out as the draw it was, exciting stuff. And I think, the, as, as I say, the main disappointment in there is that Portugal, you know, they went through. They didn't actually win a game. They drew all three of their games, so they can def they they can't afford to do that in the round of 16 now. Um, and Austria 
Austria, big disappointment, losing twice, drawing once. What happened, Austria? I, th you know, I thought, yes, they've got some name players. You know, they had Arnautovic, who I think didn't have the best tournament. Alaba as well. But I just thought, I don't know why I, I thought, maybe because of those players, I thought the players around them were maybe of a similar quality, but quite clearly not. And you've got Hungary going through first, Iceland going through second. Portugal going through third. So now moving on to the tournament bracket as has been announced obviously in the last couple of minutes or the last 15 minutes or so. Now first up on Saturday the 25th of June as you can see and I'm just reading this for the first time now as well. We will have at three o'clock we've got Switzerland versus Poland. Um, we will then have at six o'clock you've got Wales versus Northern Ireland which I think will be a really good game. And then at 9 o'clock at night, you'll have Croatia versus Portugal. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do, and I'm hopefully going to try and remember these predictions as well by memory. Switzerland versus Poland, I'm looking at as a game that could really, it could go either way, depending on what version of each team turns up. For me, personally, I'd be looking at this thinking that Poland should be going, should be going through on this one. They should win comfortably, maybe comfortably is the wrong word, but they should they shouldn't come up against too much of a resolve, in my opinion. I think if uh, Lewandowski and Milik up front, or whoever's going to be partnering Lewandowski up front, if they can click together like they should have in, in one of the other games where Milik just had one of the best chances of the tournament, well, six, maybe not even six yards, not maybe four yards out, and he just had to try and head it, looks like a dolphin that's just fell over in water, and he could have just kicked it instead, but he didn't. If they can click into gear, I think Poland could steamroll Switzerland. Um, however, it could also swing the other way. If Poland can't click it together, I would expect Switzerland to get a 1-0. However, what I'm going to go for is I'm going for a solid 2-0 win for Poland on that one. The Wales and Northern Ireland match. Now, Northern Ireland have shown quite a lot of resolve. However, they still are showing quite, you know, they're not showing the best ability to create chances. Whereas Wales, obviously in their last group game, winning against Russia and winning in style might I add Joe Allen running that midfield and just just the whole team of Wales were you know Russia didn't look like they could they were going to cause any problems whatsoever to Wales and I just think Wales are gonna I want Northern Ireland to do well not just because they're the sweepstakes team I have it work but I want Wales I want Northern Ireland to do well because it would be just so unheard of for Northern Ireland to come into this tournament and you know beat Wales or something like that. Now, this also sometimes depends on what Wales turns up. Is it the way it's going to be the Wales that came up and smashed Russia? Or is it going to be a Wales that turns up and maybe struggles against England apart from the free kick? And we weren't playing the best anyway in that first half. I'm not sure, but I am going to go with my gut. And I do think that this is going to be a 2-1 victory for Wales and Northern Ireland will be going out at the, at the round of 16. Croatia versus Portugal. The way Croatia played in their last match, compared to the, and you compare that to the way Portugal just played in their match, it's now wide open, in my opinion. If Portugal had just crawled over the line and got into the third place, uh, best that plays third place, and got into the round of 16, I'd have been saying Croatia, no doubt. And I would have actually said that Croatia would win 2 0 or 3 0, depending on, you know, because they. Croatia beat Spain without that little linchpin guy of Modric in the midfield. I know they obviously have Rakitic and they've got quality all around the pitch, um, but they did it without um, did it without Modric and they did it without really having a focal point in Mandzukic either. Um, so Croatia, very very dangerous, an outside one, an outside team to go quite far in this team because there's all, there always tends to be one. It's not necessarily the big teams that make it to the final semi-finals, and finals and such. Um, however, if the Portugal turn up, that I think that could turn up on a bit of momentum from the game that they've just had today where Ronaldo was running the show how we expected and maybe wanted him to as well. While I'm not a great fan of him as a person, maybe as a football player as well, when he runs a team and when he's, when he's on fire, he is great to watch. He's fantastic to watch. He's obviously one of the very best in the world to watch. This is why... I think that, now I think the round of 16 is obviously where we get extra time and penalties. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one though, because I haven't actually looked into it. Um, I actually do think that this will go, this could be one of those that goes to a score draw all the way through extra time. 
and I think that um, Croatia would nick it on penalties, controversial as, a, as, as it might seem. I just don't think... I think it will be a score draw of 2-2 two, two, right the way through extra time and Croatia will nick it on penalties. That's just how I see it. Just my opinion um, anyway. Moving on to Sunday, 26th of June. We kick off at 3 o'clock with France versus Republic of Ireland, which, having just seen that game being announced tonight, and again, credit to Republic of Ireland, um, again, it depends on what France turns up. France have the ability to steamroll anybody. France have that sort of quality in their team. It's similar to Belgium, but I actually believe that France have the most quality, along with, like, Germany and such like that. I think, actually, just along with Germany, I just think that Belgium are a little bit below that. But I think that France have at least probably joint first quality team in this tournament that could steamroll anyone. They're going to come up against an Ireland team that are going to think, we do not have the quality that these guys have, but we have an absolutely wonderful team spirit. Unbelievable team spirit, and they fight for each other every second on the pitch. They are fighting. And that's quite difficult to come up against when you've got a lot of quality and it doesn't click, which it didn't click in France's last game, doesn't click in the last couple of games until quite late on. Um, obviously, France have the uh, maestro Dimitri Payet. They obviously have Pogba, who can look great for certain periods of the game, but tends to fade in and out, which isn't what you want for someone who's apparently quoted as having a release clause of £163 million which is ridiculous, but that's another video for another day. Um, this one, I've got to be realistic. I think that France will be coming into this one knowing that they didn't perform very well in their last match of the group, even though they topped the group. I'm going to be going with a 3-1 victory. And this is a prediction based on France coming in and being on form. If they don't come on form, this could very well be one of those, a 1-1 draw, and it could very well go on to penalties as well and be very nervy for the host nation. But my first and like my gut instinct prediction is a 3-1 victory for France. Moving on to 6 o'clock kickoff, Germany versus Slovakia. Slovakia, I'm sorry, you are. I think you are going out at this stage. Not, nothing to do with you playing us because you came with a great game plan against against England. You really did. You came with a really awesome game plan to keep us out your goal and it worked. Worked a treat. They wanted to break on us but unfortunately we do have quite a good defence ourselves. Sometimes <laughs> when it works. When they can keep their heads and not just, you know, I don't know. Um, I do think that Germany have just got too much quality. Yes, Germany did become come unstuck and sneaked out a draw with Poland, which I thought Poland should have won. But I just think that Germany are going to be too dominant. It's at this stage of the competition that I think Germany are going to start to turn the screw and they're going to have to start performing because the teams that are going to be left are just going to be either of quality or exceptional heart. And if they don't have that going into these games, they could come undone. Now, I'm not saying that Slovakia couldn't keep them out like they kept us out. It's just that Germany have so much more quality all over the pitch than, say, England do and anybody else in our group that we had. We had Russia and Wales. Germany all over that pitch are such a well-rounded group that do play as a team quite well. The problem that they've got, do they start with a false nine in Mario Goethe, which in my opinion doesn't work, or do they start with, like, a Mario Gomez, which I would say, if you're going against Slovakia, and you've just seen the performance that Martin Skirtle put in against England, I would be starting with a central striker because you need to give him as much trouble as you can. If you give Skirtle trouble, he cannot do the things that he did against England, uh, keeping the ball out and stuff like that. You've got to have someone in there that's going to get physical with him and not be afraid of the physicality he's going to give back. If they go that way with a Mario Gomez, I would go for a comfortable 2-0 victory with Germany easing into uh, the quarter-final stage. Um, I don't see it going any other way, to be honest with you. I know that Hamshik is a quality player, but he's one quality player against 11. And that's, it just doesn't work. It doesn't compute. So I think that Germany are going to win 2-0 comfortably. Hungary versus Belgium at 9 o'clock on Sunday. If he won, because I'm just not sure. Belgium, Belgium are a bit like a dish you've never cooked before. You might nail it, you might suck at it. It depends. It just depends on 
it's quite random and that actually seems what Belgium are like they are just random they'll come out and smash a team 3-0 and then they'll crawl over the line or they'll get a draw or, and they just you cannot do that in this in a tournament like this in this sort of stage when we're now like getting to the knockout stage of a tournament you can't rely on doing that at this stage even though they might look at Hungary and just be like it's, you know it's only Hungary you can't ignore what they did in their group and they played exceptionally well for their group whereas Belgium have looked a bit lacklustre let's be honest they've looked very lacklustre haven't looked like they some of the players haven't looked like they're really up for it and what I think they discovered in one of the matches might have been against Italy actually uh, where Italy won 2-0 if you shut out Hazard and you shut out De Bruyne, you've you've shut off the supply lines completely. You shut off those supply lines, Lukaku can't do anything by himself, really. He has to be fed that ball. Yes, he's got some individual quality, um, as do the other forwards as well, Origi, Benteke. Obviously, I'm a favourite of Origi um, because I think he's such a good young talent um, and he is quite creative. But their central striker, really, they go with Lukaku which is perfectly fine. He had a great season with Everton, all things considered where they finished in the table. However, there are some chances I've seen Lukaku absolutely sky or completely miss. And I just can't believe that he's missed them. Most strikers wouldn't, eat. most like conference strikers wouldn't miss them. It's just, you have to be, they have to be fed in a certain way. And if he doesn't get fed in the way that he likes to, it doesn't work for Lukaku. That's the same in the Premier League and the same in this tournament. Hungary, they just they just bring so many different things to the table that maybe Belgium might struggle to deal with. They come with a good defence, despite the Portugal game today, when they come up against a superstar who decided to actually, you know, kick his ass into gear and pull their, pull his own team out uh, out the shit. Um, Hungary have been pretty damn good and pretty consistent as well. This is another one that I can see going right as a draw. I actually think this will be a nil-nil draw though, and it'll go right through to extra time, go to penalties. I think Belgium will clinch it on penalties, but I don't think, I think it's going to be a very nervy affair for Belgium. Um, yes, they have, like France, like Germany, they have the ability to steamroll. I'm just not confident that they'll be able to do it. Monday the 27th of June, we've got Italy versus Spain at 6 o'clock. Interesting match, obviously, because this is a consequence of Spain going lackluster and trying to play out a draw against Croatia, and Croatia nicking it and topping the group. Now Croatia have got what many would consider, and probably right so, um, a slightly easier draw in Portugal, whereas they could have been coming up against Spain, which would have been way more difficult, um, because Spain... The thing with Spain is, if you allow them to have possession, you try and sit off them and sit back from them, they'll tear you apart, they'll pass you to bits, and they'll, they'll destroy you. <laughs> there's, no, there's no other way about it. But if you go at Spain, and you don't let them rest, you don't let them have that time on the ball, you cut out Andres Iniesta and Nolito and stuff like that, um, and you're making them commit their centre-backs, their um, to go and up forward like Sergio Ramos and PK do quite often. Um, if you commit to them, you get them to commit their players up for, up front. It's not going to. It doesn't work well for Spain, as we've seen with Croatia. Croatia put them under a great deal of pressure, um, especially in those last 15 minutes, and Spain couldn't deal with it. If Italy can keep their absolute brick wall defence and Buffon in goal. Um, and then keep their attacking threat going forward, which they just didn't have tonight. I know they made some changes against Ireland, um, but if they keep that going, going up like Insigne and I think it's uh, Immobile, Immobile, <laughs> no Immobile. Um, I think if you keep the, the attacking threat of those guys going, then for me, I'm looking at a one-nil win to Italy, and I'm looking at that because. I do think that Italy are going to press, they're going to have to press, because they cannot afford to sit back. Yes, they have one of the best defences, but we see time and time, time and time again, sometimes having the best defence just isn't enough when you've got someone like Spain's quality. The problem with Spain is, is they go for sometimes some weird systems and stuff like that. So obviously they've got like, I think they took two strikers, two out and out strikers, and yet sometimes they'll start with a false nine. 
it worked like six years ago and it worked four years ago whenever it was um, that it worked for them and they got and it's worked quite well for them it's the times are changing you can't have like a false nine going up against like Chiellini and Barzagli and stuff like that it, it, it won't work or in my opinion it won't work anyway but I'm looking at an Italy 1-0 win and I think that Spain will be going out at the round of 16 could be very wrong though and I'll hold my hands up if I am finally the final game of this round of 16 Monday 27th of June 9 o'clock England versus Iceland and well done Iceland for giving us a very favourable draw I was panicking about coming up against someone like Portugal because I, I was even saying it today at work to some people that Portugal if if they decide to come into form and Ronaldo comes to form they'll rip us apart they'll rip us apart and lo and behold Ronaldo comes back to form not because I said it I just you just feel he's that type of player um, that once he hits form everything else starts to flow through him while they just you know obviously display they had a shite defense as well even with like not so good defenses England have struggled so far in this tournament the problem that we've got with England at the moment is how can we have all of those friendly games that we did have and still not know our best 11 that always baffles me the second thing is the changes to the team I would, while I wanted Daniel Sturridge and Vardy to start, they weren't the only, they were literally the only changes I would have made to that team that played against Wales. They were literally the difference, whereas he went and changed six different players, took Rooney out of the team, and Rooney's been class, and that showed when he put Henderson in, Henderson just didn't have it when he came, when he came on. Um, you know, and I am showing unbiased there, he is a Liverpool player, and I do like the guy, uh, I like him as a player. Um, but he just wasn't there. He was knackered. He, obviously, he's not had the game time. Same, same as Wilshere. They probably had about a similar amount of game time um, over the course of the season. Just uh, that's he needs to sort out what like going. If we get, get past the round of 16, what that solid 11 is. I've said it before. Germany, you would know about nine out of the ten, nine or ten out of the 11 players that are going to play. You, France, you know pretty much now from now on they're going to play the strongest team you'd expect you know what those players are generally going to be. Belgium, Portugal, these guys, Wales, know exactly what their t team is. We don't, for some reason. We discuss it between ourselves as fans, like, oh, such and such should be starting because they're on form, they're on form, they're on form. And then Roy Hodgson will just be like, yeah, so today we're going to be starting, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, what the, who, why, who, why are you starting that? So Iceland managed to get a 2-1 victory today against Austria, and that was just ridiculous. Like, Again, I thought Austria were going to come, were going to be quality team in this tournament, but they weren't, and they've been made to pay. Iceland, well done. Iceland are coming through really well. In fact, I'm going to try and have a look at some what their stats were in the table. Iceland have done exceptionally well, coming second in the group, joint top, well, joint on points with Hungary. They've done really, really well in a group that had Portugal and Austria, who I expected to come, like do a lot better than they did. Iceland pose a lot of threats because it's kind of unknown to English fans or most English fans I would say not as a detriment I mean myself included because I don't really know the Iceland team just what I've seen in this tournament as I said the only person I know plays for Swansea um, I'm not entirely sure this is one of those again right I think this completely depends on what England team turns up if the England team turns up in the second half of the Wales of the Wales match we go for it we slam into that goal and we actually put chances away because we had a lot of chances in most games. We've just, I think I've heard a statistic of something. We had like 62 shots with a 6.8 uh, conversion ratio, which is awful. That's absolutely awful. It's dire. It's never going to get you anywhere. Whereas someone else had had like 15 and they'd scored like four of their goals. There were like 15, um, 15 chances over their whole like three game tournament so far. And they scored four goals, which is way better. We look like we're just gonna, it looks like we're pinging balls from everywhere and it's just not happening at all. And it won't if we keep doing that. If we go in there, like we did second half against Wales and we try and do that for the rest, for this, go in there fired up and how they can't be fired up in the, this part of the tournament, I have no idea. Otherwise, we will suffer and Iceland will go through. If we go, if we do anything like we did in the Russia game and decision making like that and trying to go defensive, defender 1-0, 
this isn't the time to do that because we can't rely on, oh, we can get a draw, can't do any of that. We have to go and win, and we should be winning within 90 minutes. If we don't win within 90 minutes, there's something wrong. However, I actually do see it going that way, and unfortunately, as England fans, I don't think people are going to like it. I, I, can, I can honestly see it going to penalties. I really can. I can see it going to penalties. I'm seeing it in my head, and I'm thinking, putting all the performances together, and just I can see that we're going to go to penalties. I'm hoping we get it done in 90 minutes. I see us winning it on penalties, but that's not a confidence booster whatsoever. But that's only a prediction. I am expecting England to win it, but it will be on penalties. That's my review of the group stages. My predictions were quite off. Um, a lot of the first and second places I got, got right, a lot of the rest I got wrong. I don't mind that because it's a bit of fun. I'm not a prediction expert. I don't think anyone can be. Just like no one could have predicted that Leicester were going to win the league last year, apart from the dude who put a bet on for 5,000 to 1, and he probably only did that for a bit of banter. I've also done a bit of a prediction for the round of 16. I'm hoping we're going to see some good football on display because it seems now that teams are loosening up a little bit and we're seeing some like three goal thrillers. The sixth goal thriller with Portugal and Hungary especially. You know, maybe we're going to see some more goals, going to see a bit more confidence or we're going to see some teams fold. Unfortunately, I think one of the, some of the teams, one of the big teams is going to fold. I'm not sure which one entirely, but let me know what you think of the video in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? If you disagree, tell me why. You can call me a knobhead if you want, but it doesn't really get anywhere. Um, I, and it, it, I won't care. Tell me what you think. What are your thoughts? What are your predictions? Get them in the comments below. We can have a bit of a discussion. I'm hoping maybe to do a bit more live streaming of thoughts because I thought that was quite quite all right. Just get some live thoughts out there. It stays on the channel. Um, let me know what you think of that idea. I'd actually like when I get a, quite a few more people, I'd love to have like a group chat box going or something like that while I'm doing some live streaming. Let me know what your thoughts are on that as well. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here and I will catch you later.